Hey! If you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the Preferences Corrections tab. And by talk, I mean I talk, and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. To navigate to the Preferences tab, it's the Scrivener, Preferences, and here we go. We've already done all of these, and now we're going to be looking at Corrections. Okay, so this is basically all of the, like, um, kind of typing assistant type things. So we're going to go through the list, and whenever I can, I'll show you what it looks like over on this side. In the Auto Correction area, Correct spelling errors as you type. So um, this will basically just correct yeah, spelling errors as you type. So if I'm gonna type common spelling errors and typos automatically. So if I typed, let's say, tech, it's gonna just pop, change it to the. And um, apparently this can be, this feature can be kind of trained. And um, as far as like spell check in general, it's a, and like a, a Mac OS, like it's your whole operating system that it learns. So if you train it to not correct something in here, then that's going to apply everywhere, basically. So your mail and your Word and, um, you know, any other program that you've got that uses the same spell checker. That's kind of neat. Fixed capitalization of sentences, and that's just what that sounds like. So, you know, correct it, autocorrect, make it capitalized. You capitalize I, so it's just that, and you can see this kind of autocorrect thing pops up, and if I hit space, it takes it. If I want to leave it as a lowercase I, I can just be like, nah, leave it, and then it'll stay. Superscript ordinals, first, second, etc., and that's just if I type first like this and press space, it's going to superscript that ST up there. And then symbol and text substitution. So symbol and text substitution is kind of ena enabling the whatever you have set up on your just on your whole computer as far as text substitution goes with like symbols and that kind of thing. So if you have had that, if you've already set that up elsewhere in your Mac <laughs> somewhere, then this enables it to be used within Scrivener. But if you don't want it, just unclick that and it will not kind of um, imported it. So punctuation, this just is commonly used symbols, commonly used like like quotes, exclamation marks, question marks, um, ampersands, that kind of thing. Uh, basically by saying like, yeah, this is appropriate to put here, or no, it isn't, just by kind of the preset rules it has. This is mostly applies to the main editor. Sometimes it works in like the binder and the inspector, but it's mostly for the main editor. So here we go. Use smart quotes in new projects. And this, since it says new projects and all, you know, these, all these things say new project, if I toggle it, it won't change the way that we do it in here. But like, for example, um, so 54 inches, right? This is how we write it. And can you see how it changes the quotes from, you gotta watch it, you gotta catch it really easy <laughs> or catch it really fast. So I do the quote mark, and they're straight for a second, and then they curl. So that's what that means, that um, the smart quotes, that's what those are. So these are just those two little straight quotes versus these curly quotes, and this is what it will autocorrect them to. And if you don't want that, if you want some of your quotes to be um, just the straight ones, then uh, disable this. And use smart dashes and ellipses in new projects. So this is like... And if I go dot 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 all together, and did you see it kind of spaced it out? And now when I go to either side, it treats these three dots, these ellipses, as one thing. So if I hit the delete key once, they all go away. The same kind of goes for the smart dashes. So if I have my words, and then I do, I don't hit a space, and I do dash dash, then it will change to that smart, that M dash, M as in monkey. M dash. And right here, so disable smart quotes in script mode. And I'm not in script mode, so I can't show you that, but that's just disable smart quotes in script mode. Disable smart dashes and ellipses in script mode. So if you're in script mode, you are not going to get those smart dashes. So if you hit dash dash, it's not going to elongate it into an M dash. 
or it's not going to combine those ellipses all together. Okay, data detection. So automatically detect web addresses. So if you are typing something that looks like it should be a, like a .com address, Scrivener will automatically generate a web link. So when you click on it, you can go to that website. So if you're typing a contemporary and they're talking about like a fake porn site and you type it in, be careful, don't click on it, it might be real. <laughs> and you don't want that kind of stuff on your computer and your browsing history. Or maybe you do, I'm not here to judge. Um, but if you don't, be careful of those links because Scrivener will say, oh, it's a web link and it will automatically make it, uh, turn it into a web link. Automatically detect document links. So um, document titles can be linked by putting in these brackets on either side. If the text between the brackets doesn't match anything that you already have, you're gonna, it's gonna take you to a place to create a new document. So first I have to enable this, right? And then that, that, so it's an, it automatically makes it a link. So if I click on it, It'll take me over here to scene three. You can kind of see that this is grayed out. So that's how that happens. And if you do not want that to happen, is that you can delete it. And then if I do that, nothing, nothing will happen. It won't link it. If I have this enabled, so I'll change this to scene four since over here, I don't have a scene four anywhere. And so it pops up and says, hey, let's create a new linked document. And then I can create that if I want. And I'm gonna say, yeah, you know what, never mind, I won't do that. Because, um, yeah, but that's, you can, that is that feature. That's what that feature is. And then automatically detect dates, addresses, etc. Okay, so it says, hey, here's a map of it. Also, do you want to add it to your contacts list? And, or I can open it in Maps in a browser. Um, so there's that, if, you're, if that's something, if that's a feature that you need, that you can do either of those. Auto completion. Mostly it will suggest completions as you type. So, so like that. And you'll say, do you mean California? And I say, yes I do. And I can click on it or I can hit Tab and it will add it in. So sometimes I, like I said, I'll disable that just because I've got a character named something and it keeps wanting to auto-complete to a different word, so I'll shut it off. And if you're in script mode and you only want this in script mode, enable that. But then you can also make custom auto-complete lists. And to get to those, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then showing elements list on double return in script mode. So if you're in script mode, you can just do double return, you know, return, return. And that's like if you're on an empty line and you press return, then you get a list of things to choose from basically to format that current line. So if you're in script mode and you want, and you that's happening to you and you just wanna, I just wanna put in an empty line, um, this is where you can come to disable that. Custom autocomplete lists. Okay, so for project, project settings, autocomplete list is right here. And so we can add these in here. So let's add, and again, clicking our little plus sign, let's add a new word, and we'll say it's, right, so scope, general text. A lot of these, as you can see, are for scripts. Um, we can make it general text or all, which is text and scripts. So we'll just make it general text and, okay, so that is now on my autocomplete list. Um, so yeah, that's how you get to your auto, uh, custom autocomplete lists. So now down here, the system text preferences. Let's click on that. And this will take you to your Mac stuff. So this is kind of me. So this is for my texting on my phone actually and it updates into my computer, it kind of spreads it everywhere. So if I type OMW, it changes it to this so that I don't have to sit there and like type this out. And then this is an interrobang um, that I need to actually delete out because it drives me crazy. So I'm gonna take that away. <laughs> so this is where you set up the symbol and text substitution. You just hit system text preferences, it takes you to your computer's text preferences and you can change stuff there. Um, so that's it, I think, for the corrections tab. <laughs> Um, that was way shorter than my other videos that I've just been doing. 
So um, thank you so much for tuning into this video and I hope you learned something new about what you can do for automatic corrections within Scrivener. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter, and have a nice day.